Hello, my name is Keith Chug, and I'm going to provide a very quick uh, summary of the Viterbi algorithm. So I'm going to do this through an example of planning a road trip from the west coast of the United States to the east coast. And the way I've done this is I've considered four possible cities that you could start with on the west coast, Seattle, Newport, San Francisco, and Los Angeles, which I've labeled USC. And I only want to drive less than 750 miles a day each day. So, for example, at the end of the first day, this leaves me with four possible cities, Boise, Salt Lake, Las Vegas, Tucson. And in the third day, it's the pink-colored cities of Casper, Denver, Albuquerque, El Paso, etc. And so this would take me seven days, and each day I would drive less than 750 miles. And the problem I want to consider is, what's the shortest way to go from the west coast to the east coast? So I know it's going to take seven days, but I want to drive the least amount of mileage. Okay? Let me get rid of the background, and then you can see this diagram a little more clearly. So this diagram uh, is called a trellis diagram in the context of Viterbi decoding. And it's basically a diagram that shows all the possible routes you could take from the west coast to the east coast under this 750 miles a day or less um, constraint. So one way you could solve this problem of finding out what the shortest path is is just to make a long list of all the possible routes that you could take and take the sum of their uh, one day mileage uh, to get their total uh, mileage for each of the routes. Now this is gonna, there are a lot of these paths so that's really what the problem is. So for example if you consider just that you're in Salt Lake, there's three ways to leave Salt Lake one is Casper, the other is Denver, the other is Mount Albuquerque. There's three ways to leave uh, Casper, there's three ways to leave Denver, there's two ways to leave Albuquerque. So if you just look at after two days of traveling leaving Salt Lake, you're up to three plus three plus two, or eight different routes just in those two days. And then if you consider extensions of those routes, from uh, the ones from Pierre, Lincoln, Amarillo, etc., um, the number of possibilities keeps to grow um, very rapidly. So it's really not practical to write down a list of all the possible routes. There's got to be a better way. And in fact, there is a better way to do this. And that's exactly what the Viterbi algorithm does. So I want to try to explain the core ideas of the Viterbi algorithm and the execution of the algorithm using this uh, toy example. So the way to think about it is to first sort of condition on one potential city. So let's Let's focus on Boise. Now what I want to illustrate is if I say, um, if I just hypothesize that the best way to go from the west coast to the east coast uh, through, goes through Boise, then I can kind of break this shortest path problem into two segments, namely uh, a segment to the left of Boise and a segment to the right of Boise. And to illustrate this, I'm going to provide a little bit of side information here that I happen to know. I happen to know that the shortest path from Boise to the East Coast is colored in here, the one colored in here by this uh, green crayon. So it goes Casper, Lincoln, Kansas City, St. Louis, Pittsburgh, Washington. And that's 2,685 miles total from Boise to Washington there. Okay? So the idea here is that regardless of how I arrive at Boise from the West Coast, whether I came from Seattle, Newport, or San Francisco, the best way to go from Boise to the East Coast is still this green crayon line, and it's still 2,685 miles. Okay, So now you can very, very quickly reason that you really don't need to consider Newport, San Francisco uh, legs to Boise, because Seattle to Boise is, is shorter. In other words, if you were to claim that the route, the shortest path to go from the West Coast to the East Coast passing through Boise uh, started in San Francisco, I could counter that argument by saying, well, let's start in Seattle and go to Boise, and then we both follow the green path, crayon path from that point forward, and clearly mine will be less, the, the path from Seattle will be less than the path from San Francisco because it's 494 miles from Seattle to Boise, and it's 648 if you start in San Francisco and go to Boise. So this allows us to eliminate the paths that go from Newport to Boise and San Francisco to Boise, and just keep the shortest path from the west coast to Boise, which is Seattle. So by considering uh, fixing, uh, conditioning on the, the state of being in Boise, 
we decouple the problems into two shortest path problems. One is still hard. That's the green crayon one that I gave you the answer to. The other one is very easy. It's just the shortest way to go from uh, the west coast to Boise, and that's a very simple calculation. We, have, we can all tell that's Seattle. So we repeat this step at Salt Lake, Las Vegas, and Tucson. So Salt Lake only has one. Tucson only has one way to get there from the west coast. And Las Vegas would just be a simple comparison between uh, the way to get there from USC and the way to get there from San Francisco. And of course, USC is going to win out because it's 275 miles. So after one step of the Viterbi algorithm, this is the status. Um, we know the shortest path from the west coast to each of the day one destination cities. And we've also kept track of what those best paths are. Those are the lines with the arrows and the mileage of those best paths at each of the cities. Those are the yellow numbers near, near the cities. Now let's repeat this over and over, and that's the Viterbi algorithm. So now let's first go in condition on Casper at, at the end of day two. Okay? So we need to find the best path from the west coast to Casper. And we can tell that that has to be the one coming from Boise or Salt Lake. And there's only two of those because we've eliminated the other paths coming from, for example, Newport, San Francisco, going through Boise. We already got rid of those. So we really only need to consider um, the two paths, which are the extensions of the arrowed paths, and we add on the one-day mileage for each of those. So for example, if it came from Boise, it would be 494 plus 669. If it came from Salt Lake, it would be 748 plus 402. So we need to compare those two sums and choose the shorter, the smaller of those two. And it turns out that 748 plus 402 is smaller than 494 plus 669, so Boise is going to lose out. Okay, so now the shortest path from the west coast to the east coast, I mean the shortest path from the west coast to Casper is San Francisco, Salt Lake, Casper, and it's 1150 uh, miles. Okay, and now we'll repeat this at Denver, Albuquerque, and El Paso. Denver is again not very interesting, there's only one way. In Albuquerque though we have three numbers to compare. 748 plus 609, that's if he came from Salt Lake, 275 plus 576, that's if he came from Vegas, and 528 plus 452, that's if he came through Tucson, Arizona. Okay, so if we do those comparisons, uh, and then we select the shortest path uh, up to that point, uh, we arrive at this state. So this process of adding the shortest path up to a particular state with the one day path, and then comparing all of the paths that arrive at a given destination day city, is called an add compare select. So we eliminate the losers, we keep the winners, and uh, the winning paths, the paths that are labeled there with the arrows, those are known as survivor paths because they survived the ACS elimination. And you can already see that the best path from the west coast to the east coast doesn't go through Boise. So even though we had hypothesized that in order to do some early elimination, it turned out not to be true. Okay. Notice also that even though I gave the green crayon answer for Boise, we really didn't need to know exactly what that answer was in order to eliminate Newport and San Francisco. Okay, We just know that that path has to exist. We don't know what it is. And it, but the fact that we know that it has to exist and it won't change by how we get to Boise allows us to do some early elimination. And that's the key idea of the Viterbi algorithm. So now we will repeat this again for the destinations, uh, day, day three destination cities. For example, start in Pierre and compare how you could get there from either Denver or Casper to the I compare select, and repeat it at Lincoln, Amarillo, and San, San Antonio. And then we would move on to Minneapolis, Kansas City, Fort Smith, Houston, etc., all the way across the country. So if you do that, this is the result. And at the end of this uh, seven days of travel, potentially, or planning these seven days of travel, you would see that uh, we'd have four survivors uh, at the East Coast one at MIT or Boston, one in Washington, one in Wilmington, one in Daytona Beach. And if you care, compare the total mileage uh, associated with each of those cities and those survivor paths, those are the shortest ways to go from the west coast to each of those cities. And so clearly the shortest path from the west coast to any city on the east coast goes from uh, or terminates in Daytona Beach. So the last step of the Viterbi algorithm is to look at the uh, the the survivor on the East Coast that has the smallest distance or metric. So in this case it's Daytona Beach and the metric is 2658 and the last step is what's called a traceback or traceback and decode operation 
And so you want to know the shortest path or the, the specific legs of the path, you just look backwards. So you start in Daytona Beach, you look back and you say, well, we came from Tallahassee. You look back from Tallahassee. Well, we came from New Orleans. We look back, we came from Houston, etc. And you find, up that, find out that you started at USC. So now we know that the shortest path, in fact, travels from USC to Daytona Beach. Okay. So this algorithm was uh, first introduced to the uh, community by uh, Dr. Andrew Viterbi, our own Andrew Viterbi. Uh, in first published in 1968. This has been a revolutionary algorithm in the field of digital communications. It's ubiquitous in digital communication modems. Um, and so it's really just based on these very simple ideas of eliminating uh, options as early as possible using this principle of dynamic programming. And then another key innovation which is critical uh, and is unique to the Viterbi algorithm was critical for the early development and uh, deployment of the technology is this method of storing the winners as you go so that in order to figure out the best path you just do this trace back and decode. That's a very unique um, property of the Viterbi algorithm.